Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Mary Ann. So today we are going to talk about um, blood pressure, um, hopefully unconditional conditional reflexes, and we'll do a little bit of ECG. So let's begin. So what is arterial blood pressure? Arterial blood pressure can be defined as the pressure exerted by the moving blood on the wall of the artery. So this is the artery, this is the blood, I don't want you to think about it like just this red blood cell. You know the blood now, the like plasma, the liquid itself. So imagine, imagine there's a lot of blood. That means there will be a lot of pressure in the vessel, yeah. So if there's less blood, there's um, less pr um, pressure. So the amount of blood is like determines the you know blood pressure. Okay, I'm not going to waste time today. What should you focus on? So we have two types of. Uh, you have, I'm sure you've heard systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Now, what is the difference? I will show you this beautiful photo. So systolic pressure is the pressure exerted when blood is injected into the arteries. So you know your normal heart here. You know when it contracts, both ventricle contracts, yes, and the blood will enter the pulmonary vein or the aorta. Let me just use pulmonary trunk. No, no, not vein. This is the vein, sorry. The pulmonary trunk. So uh, when that's so that's what systolic um where is it? That's what systolic where's that beautiful photo that I was showing. So that's what systolic pressure is, is the blood that is ejected into the artery. So immediately the both immediately immediately both ventricles contract. That force, you know, it creates a pressure and that's a systolic pressure and it's between 120 to 140 milli, milli mmHg, millimercury. Then diastolic blood pressure is the pressure exerted within arteries between heart beats. So when the heart, let me just say when the heart is not contracting, yes, so after it has contracted, that, you know, the initial systole or contraction, that pressure is the systolic pressure. Then when it's not contracting, that's in between contraction. That's the diastolic pressure. Trust me, knowing the definition is great, but you need to know the quark will not question you on it on the definition. This is what they will question you on. So these three, these two three factors, focus on it because it will all make sense when we start the question. So it's dependent on what factors. The force of heartbeat I just explained. The normal blood volume, if there's a lot of blood in the in the ventricle, it will have to contract harder. And it will increase the force of the heartbeat so to increase the static pressure. Cardiac output, I will explain cardiac outputs in a while. So just well, let me just do that now. What is cardiac output? So I'm going to show you again a very beautiful photo. Yes, cardiac outputs. Cardiac output is made up of stroke volume and heart rate. Yes. So um what is stroke volume? Stroke volume is the amount of blood that is put out by the left ventricle. That the is the amount of blood that that is ejected when the ventricles contract and heart rate. You know what heart rate is now. So that's what your cardiac output comprises of. Um, very important. Okay, you can see here that your cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. Stroke volume is the blood pumped by the heart by each ventricle. So it's normally 70 to 80, important information. The heart rate is 70 beats per minute, like normal. The, the normal 60 to 70 beats per, 60 to 100, let's just see, but 70. If you say 70 times, it's 70, it's like, no, don't worry, let's slow down. Let's slow our row. So you know that, let's move. So that's the blood pressure, I've explained it to you. You know what it means? What does it depend on? I want you to look at this term. It's an index to the peripheral resistance. So when, they, when you see Croc talking about peripheral resistance, I want your mind to go to diastolic pressure because peripheral resistance, the resistance created by the, your vessels, your vessels are, you know, peripheral. I don't know if you get it. They're not central, like your um, central part of your circulatory system will be your heart. Do you get? So peripheral is like the blood vessel. Then as I explained what it is, it's the between heartbeats, this is the normal range, 60 to 90. What is plus pulse pressure? All these terms are important. You need to know it. It's the difference between systolic pressure comes first minus the diastolic pressure. 
what else do you need to know? Mean arterial pressure. So mean arterial pressure, you know, mean means average. So your average arterial pressure is your diastolic blood pressure plus one third of your pulse pressure. So when you calculate the difference, you add it to your diastolic blood pressure. The clock will not question you much, but in case you just, you might just put it like, what is the formula? What else do you need to focus on? Now, the main cocoa of the important important thing of this lecture. Remember I told you that viscosity is affected by the amount of um, red blood cell. If you have a lot of red blood cell, the blood will be more viscous. So you see that last lecture and this lecture are beginning to join together. Okay. A peripheral resistance is contributed by the smooth muscles of the arteries. So you know when we do histology, the arteries, our arteries, they are the arteries, they are made up of smooth muscles. So if there's vessel constriction, there'll be increased peripheral resistance because what is resistance? I know you know what resistance. So if there's vessel constriction, if the smooth muscles contract, it'll be harder for blood to move than when it's just dilated, yes? Don't worry, everything's going to make sense soon. Okay, now let me use this beautiful photo again for you. Now, I told you there's this systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. Now, these factors, you need to know how these factors affect it because that's where Croc will bring your questions from. So let's start with diastolic pressure. Diastolic pressure, I told you when you say diastolic pressure, think about very fair resistance, think about the pressure in your arteries, something like that. So if there is, what you need to know, if the, there's ve the velocity of blood increase, like it's coming so fast, the diastolic pressure will increase and vice versa. If the viscosity of blood is much, so the blood is very thick, of course the diastolic pressure will increase because thick blood will be harder to pass through the vessel, yes, and vice versa. Elasticity and compliance, What's the difference? Very important when we get to pathophysiology. Compliance means the ability for something to like stretch or expand. But elasticity means the ability of something to resist stretch. Okay, so if you have a rubber band, if you if you have a, like a, a hair packer or a hair ruffle, you know, when you open it up, it snaps back. That is elasticity. The snapping back is elasticity. But compliance, when you Mm, what what will I use when you put um, mm, I don't know what to use but when you put some when you expand something and it doesn't snap back yes so that's compliance so know that cardiac output I told you is what stroke volume and heart rate we'll do that in the next slide so now stroke volume remember your any adjacent tensing system what is stroke volume stroke volume Cardiac output is stroke volume and heart rate. Stroke volume is the amount of blood that is, what did I say it is? The amount of blood that is pumped by each ventricle. So it is fair to say that if there's increase in the amount of blood that is pumped by the ventricle, there'll be increase in cardiac output and there'll be increase in what? Systolic pressure. So remember from a renal ingesting system, what is the function of aldosterone? Aldosterone will absorb um, sodium. And if you absorb sodium, water will follow and that will increase the um, quantity of um, fluid in the body, thereby increasing the venous return. That is the blood entering the right atrium to the right ventricle, and that will also increase the blood in the in the heart itself. Yes, so that will increase stroke volume and increase cardiac output. So, if you see a question where they're talking about Cohn's disease, which is hyper hyper Cohn's disease, Cohn's disease, hyper aldosteronism it is the second most is the second cause of hypertension so you see how it causes systolic hypertension by increasing the volume of blood then increasing the stroke volume and cardiac output increases the systolic pressure you see heart rates if there is autonomic nervous system like sympathetic act activation of course to increase the heart rate increase cardiac output increase systolic pressure hormones too like your catecholamines to increase um they will increase your heart rate. Um, um, the um, adrenaline will bind to the receptors on the heart and you know stimulate further, you know, increasing heart rate and so on. The brain. Sometimes, imagine if um, you know. Let me tell you a, a joke. Like um, a, a boy and a girl, and then the boyfriend enters the the room the girl's heart will start to beat faster, yes? So it will increase heart rate and also increase the pressure. So 
total peripheral resistance. I told you when crops talk about total peripheral resistance, I want you to think about diastolic. So of course, if you have activation of your autonomic nervous system, so you're sympathetic, it will cause vessel constriction. If you have vessel constriction, the the, the, play, um, the vessel is, um, the diameter is smaller, so it's harder for blood to move. So that will cause increase in diastolic pressure. Viscosity to this, the blood is very thick, it will be harder for you to move through the blood vessel. Also increase the total peripheral resistance. You can do, you can think about the rest yourself. It's so easy, yeah? So you understand the difference. Good. Then regulation of blood plasma and blood pressure. So there's something called the baroreceptor. These are, there's the immediate short and long term. I will not explain everything. I'll just talk about the one crop focus on. So in the immediate mechanism, like baroreceptor, chemoreceptor, when you stand from, you're sitting down, you stand, there's a drop in blood pressure because gravity will act on your blood and it will go down. So how does your body compensate for this? So it's very quick. Um, look here. So your baroreceptor, your baroreceptor acts in a matter of seconds. And what happened is that um, it's located in your aortic act and carotid sinus. What happened is, uh, okay, let's start from here. When your blood pressure decreases because um, you, the person stood up, that causes when it's more active, there's a decrease in blood pressure. The amount of impulse that the baroreceptor is sending to the cardiovascular center in the medulla will decrease. And because it has decreased, your sympathetic nervous system will be activated. What is going on? And to stimulate um, increase of heart rate and vessel constriction to increase the blood pressure. If you have blood high, um, let's say you already had the person already had hypertension, the baroreceptor will be sending a lot of impulse to the cardiovascular center in the medulla, and the parasympathetic will be like, okay, let me handle this. It will decrease heart rate and cause vessel dilation. Why am I bringing this to your attention? Because there's a disadvantage of this mechanism. It's someone that has, it's someone that have hypertension. There's constant words hypertension yes what happened is that that's the normal um blood pressure is 120 and um, by 80. so in a person that has maybe 140 or let's say 160 by by 100 what happens is that this viral receptor will now make that new um blood pressure as the normal blood pressure so when the person sit again and stand it's now be, you know, do you get what i'm saying like it's it it's it, it sets it takes, because the hypertension is constant, it takes that 140 over 100 to be the new, to be the normal blood pressure instead of the 120 that it's normally meant to be. So that's a disadvantage of it. Uh, let's continue. Oh, uh, your chemoreceptors. I'll explain it if you see a question in Croc because they don't really question you much on that. Okay, so let's move on to ECG. What do you need to know in ECG? Uh, first of all, We'll be doing it most with proceeding in pathophysiology. You have the SA node, AV node, bundle of his bundle branches and Purkinje fibers. Okay, your SA node is known as the pacemaker, and it sends its impulse to the AV node. It, no, it sends its impulse, you can see, to the atrium. It will depolarize it and cause contraction. When it gets to the AV node, there's like a pause. Okay, then it, it, the AV node, there's a delay, then it will calm down and then stimulate the, the impulse will now calm down and stimulate the ventricles to contract. So you know the pathway. Why am I showing you this? Because I'm going to show you this. So we have the P wave, QRS, T wave. Yes. So what does P wave stand for? It stands for, this just this, so let me use it, just this. This is this is wrong. It's meant to be like, it's like a curve, not sharp like this. So that's why I'm using this. So this is your P wave. It uh, represents your Atra what depolarization and it's um in the indicative of your S SA node firing because when your SA node from this picture when your SA node fires it will depolarize the atrium you get it so that's why here they said the P wave is for atrial depolarization the QRS is for ventricle depolarization okay so the ventricle contracting then the T wave is ventricle repolarization, so the ventricle relaxing. Someone asked me, where is atrial? Because um, I, I told you atrial depolarization is contracting, ventricle depolarization is contracting, and ventricle repolarization is relaxing. So where's your atrial repolarization or your atrial relaxing? It's actually in your QRS complex, but it's not shown on the ECG, so it's, part, it's practically absent, so Croc will not question you on it, but just a fun fact. 
what do you need to know? Why, why am I stressing this? You also need to know this. You know, the QRS is also broken down into like the individual part. Like, why is it different? The Q wave actually corresponds to the depression of the interventricular septum. So here, your interventricular interventricular septum. So it's it's a it's actually depolarizes this first. It moves in this direction. Yes, like this, just as I showed you here. Here, the pathway here. It moves like this, as you can see. So it starts from your interventricular septum. Then the Q, the R wave represents the depolarization of the main mass of the ventricle. That's why it is the what it is the largest here because it is the main mass of the ventricle. Then your um, where is it? Then your S wave signifies the depolarization of the ventricle. So the base of the ventricle, the last part of the ventricle. So around here around this place. You might think, oh, maybe this is the base, but it's not the base. The base is actually here. So don't make that mistake. Unconditioned stimulus is, or should I even reach the PDF for you? It's you no know, less unconditioned stimulus. It is, it's unconditioned. It's like, uh, it's, it's something, okay, let me give you a story. There was this experiment carried on a baby. Uh, when they play a loud noise, so the loud noise, the baby will cry. So the loud noise is the unconditioned stimulus and the response is crying. Okay, this is just inbuilt in the child. The child didn't have to learn this. Yes, so that's why it's unconditioned. The loud noise will cause the child to cry or a loud noise will cause you to turn to the direction of the noise. So you didn't, you know, you didn't learn this. Nobody had to teach you this. So it's unconditioned stimulus and unconditioned response. Now, back to my story. What they said to do with this child was before they would play that loud noise, they would give this child a fluffy rabbit. So the child would play with the rabbit, but immediately they give the child a fluffy rabbit, they would play this loud noise. And then the child would start crying. So when this, when they repeated it, so you see that the child is learning this process. So that um, rabbit is the neutral stimulus. So when they after some after some time, they removed the loud noise. So anytime they present just the rabbit, the child will cry. Why? Because the child has learned that anytime I see this rabbit, a loud noise will happen, will, will play. Or anytime I see this rabbit, there's always a loud noise, and then I'm crying. So the condition stimulus, because um, is is the stimulus that was learned. So this child had had learned, had learned it that this rabbit, when I get it. There's always a loud noise and I cry. So sometimes when they remove the loud noise, they'll just give the child the rabbit and the child will just start crying. So you can see that the neutral stimulus became the condition um, stimulus. And then when they give the child this rabbit, the child will cry, which is the condition response. It's just called condition response because the crying, like why is unconditioned and conditioned? Here's our unconditioned is due to unconditioned stimulus. You get that was a loud noise. But here, the conditional response is due to the length um, neutral stimulus, which was the rabbit. Do you get it? Yes, yes. Anybody that did not get it, please call me. Don't worry, when we start doing the questions, I will be explaining it as we go on. And okay, that's all. That's all for today's lecture. If you don't understand, you can watch this video. Circulatory system. A student 18 years old during physical activity with distribution of blood flows in organs in rheographically is rheographically is rheographically registered in the vessels of what organ the blood flow increased the most. So okay, I didn't mention this, but I want you guys to write this down. When there's when somebody is performing physical activity or when there's a um, person in sympathetic state. Apart from the the normal response of how we talk about there will be um is fly you no know, we I think I've explained flight and fight yes flight and fight what what is the main function of fight and flight or sympathetic action is to redirect the blood to the important organ and remove it away from the important organ that's why when you're in sympathetic state you are you're not bothered about digesting you're not producing saliva. Your, you understand what I'm saying? So, the, because the blood um, flow will be, there will be blood flow, but it will be less. They will, be, they will take it more to the organs that need, like the heart, the muscle, the brain. Okay. So, here they now said the person was performing physical activity. 
And because physical activity in the sense that the person could be gymming or running, it's physical activity, so your muscles are moving. So that's why this will be the skeletal muscle that will get most of the blood flow. If they say something like mental activity, it will be the brain that will get um, most of the blood flow. Because that's in what vest in the vessel of what organ did the blood flow increase the most? So of course it's skeletal muscle because of physical activity. But if it was mental activity, it would be the brain or cerebrum. Yes? Good. When analyzing an ECG, it is necessary to define the pacemaker of the heart. On what basis of the measuring of what index is it possible to, to do? So now remember I told you that the um, SA node um, um, sent impulse. And I think I also didn't tell you um, here. Look, the SA node fires when it's firing. It fires as a, at an impulse of 60 to 80 beats per minute. The AV node is 40 to 60 beats per minute. Rockingham fiber is 60 to 40 beats per minute and so on. Okay. So how do you measure it? It has to be the duration of the RR interval. What do I mean by this? Let me show you another beautiful photo. Let me just be here. Okay, yeah. So what 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 are they saying? When the SA node fires, of course, it will, remember what I told you to pass through the AV node, the bundle of fibers, blah, 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 and to form your PQRS complex here. Yeah? So, what happens here? Let's say this is a P wave, QRS, um, T wave. Let's just imagine this is normal. Now, when the S, this RR interval is heart rate, you know, from here to 1, 2, 3, 4, 300 divided by 4, let's just say 5, 300 by 5 is. 560 bits per minute. So one, two, what I was doing here was one, two, three, four. Let's just say five. Let's just say this assume it's five because I don't want to be doing 300 divided by four. You count this one, two. Can you see that if the distance between here and here, here and here, here and here, here and here is the same thing? Yes. So the this heart is this um is I'm showing you it, it is regular. And it's 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 from here it's it defines that you know yeah because you can see there is there's normal PQRS and you can see that um the um the the how do I explain it one two three four let's just assume it's five let's assume here two is five here is five if you say three hundred divided by five is what um, sixty um, bits per per minute and if 60 bits per minute according to this photo I showed you here to be the word SA node assuming it was maybe um when we counted it it was maybe 10 for example 10 um 300 divided by 10 is what 30 so according to this photo I showed you 30 is what Parkinger fibers so they actually in order to determine the pacemaker of the um, heart because it, you want to know what the pacemaker of the heart is so if you count this and you are seeing that it is it is um 60 to be SA node. If it is um 40 to be the AV node, you get so that's why you're saying you have to check the duration of the RR interval. Makes sense. Yes. As a result of bre um, breath holding 40 seconds, finally, the frequency of heartbeat and system arterial tone increase. The realization of what mechanism of regulation causes change. So when you see this question, this is how I want you to approach it. What is the response first? That's what you have to say first. There is what increase in heartbeat and um, system, and system. This is means like there's increase in the um, there's vessel constriction. That's what they are saying. So what does it mean? It's sympathetic here. So what? How many sympathetic do you have here? One, two. So the next question we have to say is it condition or unconditioned reflex? Now, now, anytime you approach a question like that, there is this, you see, reasoning. If there is direct stimulation of specific receptor in the body, it will be unconditioned. Okay, because me, right from just reading the question, I can tell that the person did not learn this. I know, if, like, if you hold your breath, you, you cannot learn this. This is like it's part of your normal mechanism. So me, I know. But if in case you are confused, or oh, I'm not sure if this person learned this or not, you can also ask yourself: Does this um this thing the person is doing does it have a direct stimulation on the body? Yes. Why? 
when you hold your breath, there's increase of carbon dioxide in the blood. And as we move further, you see that carbon dioxide irritates your chemoreceptors and it will cause some response which will cover as we move forward, yes? So because it has a direct response on the body itself, so you have to choose unconditioned sympathetic. Okay, good, let's move on. 125. In the course of an experiment on animal, it was stated that the arterial tony depends on the size of vascular resistance. In what vessel is of greatest, um, they ask you what vessel has greatest resistance? So I think the answer will be arterioles. Why, why not? Because the, as I told you that the more is becoming vessel constricted, um, the, as like the diameter is becoming smaller. So it will, the, um, arterial, the arterial tony or the tonicity of the arteries, okay? We, uh, if, it's, if it's becoming small, so when they are talking about there is um, the, at, when they say arterial tony, is the tonicity of the arteries, okay? So in what vessel has the greatest resistance? Actually, the arterioles that has the greatest resistance because it has the smallest diameter. Why not capillaries? Because capillaries is quite smaller than arterioles. Because, um, Capillaries, if you look at your capillary bed, you have multiple capillaries, as you can see, multiple capillaries. And this is just one um, arterial. So uh, these multiple capillaries compensate for the um, for the blood that is coming. So that's why it doesn't pose as the greatest resistance. So that's why it will be the art arterials. It's just a rule, you should know it. I cannot explain further. 126, a man of 40, the rise of arterial tony or the tonicity of the vest of the art, um, arteries increased was, so was diagnosed after emotional excitement. What is the probable reason for this? So they are telling you that there was an increase in the arterial tone. So when they say there's an increase in tone, when they say there's an increase in tone, I want you to think about it as there's more pressure. Okay, think about it like that. Now, they say, that it increased after emotional excitement. So probably because they caught him cheating or maybe the, the guy proposed to the girl and her blood pressure is spiking through the roof and so on and so forth, yeah? So, so what is the possible reason for this? Hyperpolarization of cardiomyocytes. Why is it not this? Because I told you there's hyperpolarization. The heart is practically not even contracting. If your heart, are not, if your heart is not contracting, that's supposed to be a decrease in what systolic blood pressure. Are they talking about systolic blood pressure? No, they're talking about the vessels. I'm, you should be thinking of what um, from diastolic pressure, yes? Dilation of arterioles. If there's dilation of arterioles from my um, lecture, there will be what a decrease in the diastolic pressure. So it cannot be the reason why, because there's a rise in the question. Decrease of frequency of heartbeat is systolic. So we are, we are not concerned about systolic here, so we're not even looking at it. Increased tone of parasympathetic. If there's increased tone of parasympathetic, there'll be vasodilation. It will not rise, it will not increase the pressure in the arteries. Increased tone of sympathetic nervous system, yes, because it will cause vasoconstriction. And vasoconstriction will increase the what? Diastolic blood pressure or the tone or the vest um, the pressure in the in the vessel or in the arteries. Yes. If you don't understand, call me back. But I feel like you guys understand it because I feel like I explained it well. 127. In an experiment during the study of the process of the excitation of cardiomyocytes, it was determined that in the face of rapid depolarization, sodium ions can move additionally. No, during the face of rapid depolarization, sodium ions can move additionally. What channels can they additionally move through? So remember I told you that from our, from our first physiology lecture when I was in action potentials, your um, action potential, your cardiac cells. So there's what? There's sodium and calcium, yes? So I told you sodium and calcium is for depolarization and potassium is for what? Repolarization, yes? So by better elimination, if they're asking what additional... Um, ions can move through the channel that will cause depolarization. It will be what? Calcium. So easy to understand. It cannot be lithium, magnesium, chlorine. We don't even have it in the action potential. And potassium is for reprisation. During the physical activity, the minute volume of the minute volume of blood of a man with a transplanted heart increased. 
what mechanism of regulation provides these changes? I'm so glad I saw this question. Something you need to know is when someone has, when they perform heart transplant or a kidney transplant, it's very difficult to say you want to reattach the nerves. Yes. So the regulation of the heart will not be, the, the, it's like the nervous regulation of that organ has gone. So regulation of that organ will not depend on hormonal regulation. You get it. So if you cut, um, if you perform a heart transplantation, your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system cannot regulate your heartbeat and your heart rate. It will not be your hormones like catecholamines, which is adrenaline, no adrenaline. Okay, so that's why the answer will be catecholamines and not all these sympathetic. Because there, once you see transplanted organ, just know that it's nothing about nervous stimulation. So it cannot be sympathetic or parasympathetic. It has to be hormones. So that's why it's catecholamines catecholam means or adrenaline or so during physical activity, there has to be an increase in, you know, blood pressure and more blood going. So it will be hormonal. That will, so the adrenaline will increase the heart rate to increase the blood flow to the skeletal muscle. Analysis, the ECG, it was stated that in the second standard lead from the extremities, the T waves are positive, the amplitude and duration are normal. What process takes place in the ventricles of heart normally? So what is what does the T wave stand for? Ventricular what? Reprisation. So that's why the answer is C, as I explained in the previous lecture just, just now. Working up a typical cardiac myocyte with a biological active substance, the increase of their membrane potential is registered due to the increased permeability of potassium ions. What substance influences cardiac myocytes? I told you that if there's increased permeability of potassium ions, so potassium is what leaving the cell. This is physiology. Potassium leaves the cell. Okay. They didn't want to tell you it leaves the cell. They just said there's increased permeability, but you know it's leaving the cell. Okay. If it's leaving the cell, what will happen? There'll be hyperpolarization. If there's hyperpolarization, there'll be what? Decrease of heart rate and heart beats. Yes. So which of these hormones can it be? It can never be thyroxine because I tell you thyroxine increases your basal metabolic rate. It cannot be adrenaline or no adrenaline because they are sympathetic. It cannot be a trinatriuretic factor. We're going to do this, don't worry, in I think the excretory parts. It's what? Acetylcholine, because acetylcholine is what? Parasympathetic. So if there's parasympathetic states, the parasympathetic state will decrease heart beats by what? By increasing the permeability of potassium. So there'll be more potassium efflux leaving the cell. That's why it's hyperparization. Do you see? All this is all about connecting the dots. 131. A woman of 30, her minute volume of blood in the state of rest is 51 mil is five liters per minute. What volume of blood passed through her lung vessel in one minute? So I didn't explain this, but let me explain this briefly to you. There's something called the systemic and pulmonary circulation. I like the fact that I didn't, I'm doing it like this now. So your systemic circulation is known as your greater circulation. What do I mean by the greater circulation? It's greater because it, your systemic circulation is responsible for the blood going through all your tissues in the body. That's why it's the greater circulation. What does it start from? It starts from your left ventricle here, which you pump it to pump it through the what to the aorta, and from the aorta it will spread. We had the thoracic aorta, the descending aorta, and when we get anatomy, we'll do the arteries, yes. And it will go to all the part of your body. So from your right ventricle to your, from left ventricle to the arterial system, to the tissue, full stop. Your pulmonary circulation, known as the lesser circulation, it starts from the left ventricles to your lungs. Yeah, so it's lesser because it only goes to your lungs, so it will pick the, um, when, it, when it, your um, your where's it your right ventricle pumps the blood to your pulmonary trunk to your lungs to receive oxygen, you see, return back to your left atrium to your left ventricle, and it has entered back the systemic circulation. So you see the way they are connected. It's very important because when we get to pathophysiology, when we have a congestive heart failure, it's very important because if there is a problem in your let's say your left ventricle cannot is not functioning, there's atrophy or it's not working what will happen is that it cannot pump blood in so the blood will start pulling back this way this way this way it will not enter back to the lungs so it will pull like this to go back 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 enter the lung and cause what pulmonary edema that's why if you see this if they tell you that there's left 
um, heart failure. It is indicative of, they will tell you that um, pulmonary edema is caused by what? Left ventricular failure. Because if this is not able to pump the blood, it will go back. I'm going too far. Let's come back. So then they said that a woman of 30, the minute, um, the minute volume of blood in the state of red is five liter per minute. What volume of blood passed through the lung? So of course it will be the same because the same blood that is going through the systemic circulation is the same as going through the pulmonary circulation because they are all connected. So that's why it will still be five liters because any the blood that is going through your heart, um, your lung, your um, your heart is the same thing that will go through your lungs because before it will enter your left ventricle, it has to be oxygenated, right? So it's the same thing. So that's why the answer will be five liters. In a month after surgical narrowing of the kidney artery of a rabbit, there is substantial increase of, of the systemic arterial tony. So there's increase of or there's increase of pressure of the arteries. Yes, does it make sense? What substance caused this? Remember from a renal angiotensin system, I told you that when you um, when there's narrowing of the artery to the kidney, there's hypoxia of the kidney. The kidney will respond by stimulating, by releasing, by, you know, the renal angiotensin system will, um, will re respond by secreting renin, and renin will cause the whole system to be angiotensin 2. Why, why is the angiotensin 2 and not aldosterone, for example? Because they can put aldosterone, but you have to choose angiotensin 2. Because remember in that lecture, I told you that angiotensin 2 will act on the words vessel to cause what vessel constriction i tell you that vessel constriction there will be what increase of what arterial tony makes sense yes so it cannot be a destroyer this is for what absorption of sodium and absorption of sodium there's absorption of sodium there's absorption of more water if there's absorption of more water there will be what increase of blood returning to the heart that will cause what increase of systolic blood pressure do you see good 133. Immediately after the transition from horizontal position to vertical position, the frequency of heartbeat of a man increased by 15 minutes. 15. So you can see that the baroreceptor worked perfectly in this person. What me mechanism underlying this? So we are back with this unconditional, unconditional reflex. There's no transplanted organ, so it's no particular mean here. Now, there's increase of heart rate. So we know it's sympathetic. Okay, so now which of the sympathetic? Is it conditioned or unconditioned? So what did I tell you? You have to ask yourself, does it have any, was there any changes or was there any stimulation in the body? Yes, what change, what stimulation in the body occurred? There was stimulation, the baroreceptor has sent impulse towards the cardiovascular center in the medulla, which I explained to you just now. So that's why the answer will be what? Unconditioned sympathetic. See why physiology is very interesting. Once you know the mechanism, it's very easy for you to know the answer. 134. So that's why it's not unconditioned because we'll, we'll cover it as we're moving further. After long physical activity, the volume of circulatory blo blood of a man. After long physical activity, the volume of circulatory blood of a man with body weight 80 kg decreased. Hematocrit was 50%. General blood protein is 80 gram per liter. The result of what process caused this index? So um, I didn't explain this. I think we'll do this in part of physiology again. This hematocrit is high. I think your normal hematocrit is meant to be just a 40 to 45. So here, they say 50. This is actually borderline. But from the question, I can tell that if, just think about it, if someone is performing physical activity, the person is running or doing something, and hematocrit increased. So there was, okay, you, you don't know what hematocrit is. What's hematocrit? Hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cell in the blood. Remember from the last lecture, I told you how these two lectures will intertwine. The blood comprises of what? The plasma and the formed element. So if someone is performing physical activity, the person is sweating and the person is losing what fluid. Okay, when you do the system, you know the way, how, how is it that sweating is affecting the blood? We'll discuss this in the excretory system, just calm down. But just know that the person is sweating, the person is losing fluid, okay? Part of the fluid is coming from the blood. 
So it reduces what the plasma. That's why the hematocrit increase because there's not increase. There's there's less fluid and more red blood cell. Yeah, so that's why it also will be loss of water with sweat. So basically, loss of water via sweat due to the physical activity. It's not increase of erythrocytes. There was no stimulation of erythropoiesis. You understand? Person was performing physical activity, so the person lost water with sweat. When we, I think this is even called um. Okay, no, just calm down, calm down. When we get to the we do all those oligocytic hypovolemia. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> Calcium canals of cardiomyocytes were packed were partly blocked. So they blocked the calcium channels in cardiomyocytes. What changes will occur? So of course it's will so it's very simple. Anyway, anytime you see this is decrease of the frequency and force of contraction. Why? Calcium is also needed for the action potential. Yes, to stimulate the action potential. So that's frequency. So when there's when um just let's think about this when there's more calcium, there'll be more frequency because there will be more action potential occurring. Also, remember from history when we do this, when we do the sarcoma, calcium is also needed for the contraction of the muscle itself. Get it? So that's why it will be decrease of the frequency and force of contraction because they block the calcium. So if they tell you that there was more calcium, it will be increase of the frequency and force of contraction. 136. Physical activity of a healthy man causes moderate decline of diastolic pressure. So physical activity of a healthy man cause moderate decline of diastolic pressure. What is the reason for this phenomenon? So diastolic pressure, we should be thinking about what the arteries, yes. So ask yourself, if there's enhancement of heart work or there's the heart, what they're trying to say, the heart is pumping more. That, that's systolic pressure, yes. So we're not even talking about systolic, yes. Decrease of elasticity of, no, let's come here. I'm looking for the one historic first. Okay, no, let's let's slow down. Let's do see decrease of the elasticity of blood vessel. If there's decrease of elasticity of blood vessel, I told you that um, from the last lecture. Let me rephrase. If there's increased elasticity of blood vessel, there's increase in in there's increase in what the tone of of the vessel or and there is increasing diastolic pressure. If there is decrease of the elasticity of vessel, there will be decrease in the uh in the there will be decrease in the what if there is decrease as you see there will be decrease in the um in the diastolic pressure yes but I will explain why it's not this decrease of the volume of circulatory blood if there's decrease in the volume of circulatory blood, there'll be decreased volume of blood in the heart. So that's systolic, yes. We're not talking about systolic. Increase of resistance of vessel. If there's increased resistance of vessel, there'll be increase in the diastolic pressure. So it doesn't rhyme with the decline. So we are left with what B and C. Why is it decline in the tone of vessel in the muscle? Because look, as I say, you'll always look at your question well. They talk about physical activity. When there's physical activity, that's why it's even muscle. So there's something going on in the muscle. Yes, first of all. And when there's what I forgot to mention, when someone is performing, we'll do this in biochemistry. When someone is performing physical activity, there's, there's actually increase in the acidity of the blood. And this um like lactic acid, you know, in biochemistry, this lactic acid will act on the vessel to dilate it. But it's actually it's just moderate, it's not that much. Okay. So that's why the answer will be B, decline of the tone of vessel in the muscle, decline of the tone of vessel in the muscle. So no, that's why it's not decrease of acidity of the vessel because this um, lactic acid do not act on the what smooth muscle. In an experiment on an animal, a cardiac circuit is examined. All valves are closed. What phase does it respond to? So it will be the isometric contraction. Okay, let me show you another beautiful photo again that I have. So you have to read this on your own though, because croc is the only one question I've seen on this in the entire time I've been teaching on this croc. You can learn this on your own. So there are there is the there is the is it from here? 
So there's the isometric contraction, ejecti ejection period, blah, 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 it's five. You can read it on your own, the phases. So what I can tell you is that in isometric contraction, all valves are closed. When the atrium is pumping blood to the left ventricle, the atrial, the atrial venous, the arterial venous valve is open, yes. So that's why it cannot be any of these phases. In the isometric contraction, the isometric contraction actually means that isometric contraction this is the period in the ventricular um, phases where the, as name implied, isometric, there is increased tension in the in the um, left ventricle, or the left and right ventricle, but there's no contraction. So before the contraction occurs, there's increased tension first. So in that period, all valves are closed. You understand? So that's why there's an isometric contraction. 138, a patient has got diminish, diminishing speed of conduction of excitement on an atrial, at arterial venous node, so the AV node. The increase of the duration of a certain index will be registered on the ECG. Okay, so again, this beautiful photo that I have again, when I was explaining to you the ECG, um, let's look for that first picture I was using. I know I told you that this is your P wave is the atrial deposition and so on. I, I didn't talk about this PR um, segment. Remember I told you that when the impulse goes from the SNA to the AV node, in the AV node, there's like a delay. This delay, is this is it here, the PR interval. So if they tell you that a patient has got diminishing speed of conduction, blah, 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 on the AV node, the increased duration of what setting index will be registered on the ECG. So they say it's the PQ interval. Why, why did they not say PR segment? It's the same thing. That's how you need to know this thing. I was trying to explain that in my interval. PQ, PQ segment is like from here to here. So it's the same thing as, you know, it's like quite, it's almost the same thing as PR. PR is just... This PR interval. No, PR interval is actually from here to here. So P Q. Do you get it? It's here. So if, if they if anyways, if it's if they didn't put PQ and they put PR interval, it will still be the same thing. Okay. That will still be your answer. PR, whatever, whatever. So you get it. I just want to explain to you that this is this indicates the delay in the AV node. Because when we get to part of the when we are doing the different types of block, because I know in the second block there is and there's there's one that is I don't know if it's second or first. There's one that there's progress. There's increased lengthening of this um of this place. So you need to look at the ECG. So if they tell you there's increased lengthening of your PQ interval, you know that it's that block. That's why I'm explaining that for you. So that's why the answer is C. The catheterization of the cavities of heart chambers and large vessels of the healthy grown up is made when is made where is the probe if during cardiac cycle the change of pressure occurred from zero to 120. So I'm going to show you another beautiful photo again. Here, look, just um, take a photo, draw this in your book. This is your left ventricle. You can see the pressure is from zero to 120. Your left atrium, five to 10 millis, millimercury or whatever this is. Uh, right ventricle is 0 to 25 and your right atrium is 0 to 1. Then I'll also show you this again. This here. Look at this, what I'm showing you. So your left ventricle is what? From 0 to 120. Why well, I'm showing this because in this one, they put it the aorta to 80 to 120. They also put the, um, the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary so you, you get it, so you can write this down on your own, just in case they want to, they can change it, they can remove this and put maybe um, 80 to 120, so you know that the answer will be a your time in that case, yeah? So because it's 0 to 120, that's why it's left ventricle. In an experiment on a dog, the peripheral part of Vagus nerve on the neck is irritated. What changes of cardiac activity will take place? I told you guys in the first lecture, no, in the second lecture of when we did our cranial nerves, I told you that Vagus nerve is like the, is the king of parasympathetic, yes? So if you irritate the vagus nerve, you're irritating your parasympathetic nerve. So how will this affect your cardiac activity? Of course, there has to be the decrease of what the frequency of contraction, because that's the only one that's decreased here, yeah? good. 141, in an experiment, an isolated heart of a dog was perfused with the solution of over-concentration of calcium chloride. 
what changes will take place in the heart. Of course, I just explained this increase in the frequency. Why? Because of increased calcium entering in the action potential um, cycle, yes? And also increased calcium present in the sarcomere, so the increase in the force of the contraction. So increase in the frequency and force of contraction. 142. The ECG of a patient showed the increase of the duration of T wave. The increasing of what index has, was caused by the diminishing speed of a certain process in the ventricle. So we know that the T wave is what reprisation of the ventricle already. So that's why we know the answer is reprisation. But to just explain the question, what they're talking about is that they're telling that there was increased duration of the T wave. If they say there's increased duration, it means that the impulse is taking time to pass through the to or let's say the reprisation is taking time to complete. You understand? So that's why they say diminishing speed of words. Diminish that means the reprisation of the of the ventricle is taking time. So that's why there's increased duration of T wave. Of course, there's the normal duration of the T wave. You get it? Good. 143. What changes? What changes in the isolated heart of a frog? We started late, so that's why we're adding extra time. What changes in the isolated heart of a frog can be expected after introducing surplus amount of calcium chloride in the perfused solution? We just did this increase in the frequency and force of contraction. The ECG of a patient showed the increase of the duration of the QT interval. The increasing of this index was caused by the diminishing speed of a certain process in the ventricle. So, of course, we had the normal QT interval, but there's increased duration because whatever is supposed to occur, which we would say in the option now, is taking time. So we know that the QRS um, wave is what the position of the ventricle. We broke down what the QRS is, yes. And the T wave is the position of ventricle. So what would be the answer? The position and reprisation of the ventricle. So that's why it's B. 145. Before a competition, a sportsman has got the increase of arteriotony and frequency of heartbeat. By the influence of what part of the central nervous system is it possible to explain these changes? So I told you that, for example, if um, your heart rate increases, you know, when you have um, drop of pressure, you know, I've explained this many times. Also, too, when someone is preparing for a sport, there's that, you know, tension, they are preparing for it, they are breathing in and out is like you have let's say you are voluntarily controlling the increase of heartbeats that's why in the sports people before the exercise or before the competition they can increase their heartbeat and heart rate because they are anticipating they are breathing in and out and so on 146 when compensatory mechanism arise what compensatory mechanism arise when a healthy person passes from a um, lying position to a standing position. So I just explained this to you. Person was lying down, person stood up. There's a word, gravity acted on the person. There's a drop in blood pressure. What will happen? What compensatory? Now they're asking you, baroreceptor will sense this. Or will I say the baroreceptor will stop firing to the um, cardiovascular center in the medulla and the sympathetic um, nervous system will be activated. So what compensatory mechanism will occur? increase in the frequency of heartbeat okay good because if you look at the rest the rest will, will not favor it the speed of conduction of excitement through the av node of a healthy av node through the atrioventricular node of a healthy person is 0 0.2 to 0 0.05 so i didn't explain it because i told you there's a normal duration we do this in pathophysiology i have a very beautiful um, presentation. You're going to love all those heart blocks, Wolf Parkinson's syndrome. You're going to love it. But this is the normal. Now, why is it that the AV node, when the impulse from the SNO gets there, why is there a, a, a delay? Because, think about it, let's eliminate the other answer. Sufficient force of auricular contraction. No, that's, it has, that's not, we're talking about AV node. It's, it's not it. Simultaneous contraction of both auricles, no. Simultaneous contraction of both ventricles, no. Sufficient force, no. 
sequence of contraction of the oracle and ventricle, yes, there has to be that delay because when you have your normally no when you have when your um, blood enters the right atrium, when you watch the cardiac cycle, when the um, heart blood passes from your um, let me show you this picture here. When the blood, of course, the blood from the right atrium enters here and left atrium enters it, they enter at the same time. Now, what was the question? Um, if these atrium and ventricles are contracting at the same time, does it make sense? No. So that's why they say pause in this AV node because when the SA node fires, of course, that I told you there will be depolarization of the atrium, okay, and then it will contract, sorry, and to push blood down. That's why that pulse is there, so that all the blood can go down. And then when the AV node will not send the impulse like this, and then the ventricles will contract. You see? So that's why the answer is sequence of contraction of auricles or atrium and ventricles. Hmm. 146. What effects will be electrostim? What effect with the electrostimulation of bioreceptor of the carotid sinus lead in an experiment on the dog? So the answer will be expansion of vessel. Why? Good. I'm going to break down the answer. I told you that from this beautiful presentation I showed you. Where was it? Look, when, where do you have increased firing? When you have what? An increase in the um, blood pressure. I told you when there's an, you need to know, very important, don't make mistakes. Students need to make mistakes a lot. When there's an increase in blood pressure, mm -hmm. yes, there'll be increased baroreceptor activity in terms it to be, because there's a lot of pressure, so there'll be increased firing to the cardiovascular system in the medulla. That's why the parasympathetic will act. Do you understand? In the, in, if there's a decrease in pressure, they say, if there's a decrease in blood pressure, there's a decrease in activity. That's why your sympathetic um, nervous system will act because it does, it's like your body's about to die. It's like, what's going on? Do you get? So here, they told you that what effect to the electrostimulation of bioreceptor. So if they told you there's electrostimulation, it's like irritation. So they are stimulating it. So there's more firing. If there's more firing, what will be the result? The parasympathetic nervous system will be activated. In the parasympathetic nervous system is activated. There's supposed to be a what? A decrease in blood pressure. Now, you know that you have put your, in the bracket, a decrease in blood pressure. If there's vessel constriction, will you have decrease of blood pressure? No. You actually have what? Increase of diastolic pressure. If you have increase in the frequency of heart beats, it will be increase in systolic pressure. If you have increase in the minus blood volume, that is the increase in systolic pressure. Increase in systolic volume is the same thing, increase in systolic pressure. Yes. So that's why the answer will be expansion of vessel or vasodilation of vessel because vasodilation of vessel will cause what? Decrease in blood pressure. 149. The frequency of heartbeat of a man is constantly at level of 40 beats per minute. What structure is the conductor of this reading? Of course. Every node, because from this place, I told you 40 to 60 is what? No, sorry, this must be 59. Okay, correct is 59, not 60. Every node is 60 to 80. Yeah, Purkinje fibers is 30 to 39. So that's why the answer is every node. Okay, let me explain further. Normally, your SA node is the normal pacemaker. It's supposed to be firing. But in case of some disease where there's SA node block, your AV node can start firing on its own. Okay, because your heart is very important. If one's in damage, does that mean your heart should just give up? Your heart is very smart, though. So that's why the AV node will take the place. Don't worry, we do this in pathophysiology. I just wanted to explain to you why, you know, why the way, where, the, where they are bringing this question from. So that's why in someone who is on that the SA node has failed and the AV node is firing, their heart rate will be like 40 beats per minute. And you know it's low because the normal heart um, rate for somebody is 60 beats per minute, 60 to 100 beats per minute. The reflex cardiac arrest, a reflex cardiac arrest happen in a surgical operation on the organs of abdominal cavity. What is the center of this reflex located? So again, 
this is croc trying to make you connect the dots i told you that your vagus nerve is what the king of parasympathetic i told you that it mostly sends if you look at when we do anatomy you look at your vagus nerve let me just show you so that nobody will forget your vagus nerve if you look at the the like let's say the vagus nerve innervation if you look at how deep it goes look look at this picture mm, which picture will i show you this you can see that your vagus nerve is part look at it is the king it practically goes to your digestive organs you like practically especially the smooth muscles of organs write that down smooth muscles of organs so here there was cardiac arrest Okay. I mean, it also goes to the heart. The heart is not a smooth muscle, but I'm just telling you that where you should be getting it from. They were performing an operation on the abdominal cavity. Okay. Abdominal cavity contains what? Um, organs, you know, organs that have smooth muscle. Yes. So now, because of this operation, they have irritated the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is what? The king of parasympathetic. If there is irritation of the vagus nerve, you have what? decrease of heart rate. If the vagus nerve is intensely irritated, it will re result in cardiac arrest. Did I ask you where is the center of this reflex located? Of course, medulla oblongata, because I told you that cranial nerve 9, cranial nerve 12 is located over here. The origin is where medulla oblongata. During the research of an isolated cardiomyocyte, it was determined that it does not generate the impulse of excitation automatically. What structure in the car is this cardiomyocyte gotten from now good another point you should write down is that your SA node your AV node your um heat bundle and your Purkinje fibers can generate excitation or they can generate impulse automatically but your ventricles cannot generate impulse automatically write that down so that's why your answer is ventricles 152 in an experiment on a mama by the destruction of setting her structures, the conduction of, excited, of excitement from the atrium to ventricle is stopped. What heart structure is destroyed? So, of course, it will be the AV node. Because I told you that when the SA node sends the impulse, it will go to the AV node and they say delay, yes. Then the AV node will now send the impulse down to the ventricle. So, you can think about it that it's, it's, it's like, you can think about it like this, that it's taking the impulse that was sent by the AV node by the, sorry, by the SA node from the atrium to the ventricle. You get it. So that's why it's AV node. Anywhere you see clock telling you about a structure in the heart that conducts the excitement from the atrium to the ventricles, and they're asking you what it is, just go for AV node. When examining a person, it was determined that the minute volume of blood is 3,500 milliliters. Systolic volume is 50. What is the frequency of heartbeat. So again, I'm going to show you this picture I explained to you here. Where is it? I, when I was showing you that stroke volume. Here. What did I tell you? Card, um, cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. I told you that. Yes. Good. Now look at this beautiful presentation. I, this beautiful photo I'm going to show you now. Look, look at this beautiful picture. I'm going to show you. Cardiac output is what stroke volume times heart rate. Now, write this down. The normal cardiac output is actually 4,000 millimeters to 5,000 milliliters or 4 to 5 liters. Yes. Now, in the question they told you here, remember that cardiac output stroke volume times heart rate. Stroke volume is the blood pumped by each ventricle. Heart rate is the rate at which the heart is pumping. Yes. In the question here, they told you that they're already giving you that the word, the minute volume of blood or the cardiac output, okay, same thing, is 3,500. So that's why I wrote, what, 3,500 here, because cardiac output, yes, 3,500. They also told you that what the systolic volume is 50. So systolic volume, eh? Systolic volume or stroke volume. Okay, same thing, stroke volume, okay? It's 50, so I wrote it here. They're not asking what is the heart rate, they don't know. So simple mass, when you don't know this, it will be, you say 50 times, let's say, let, let this be X, yes? So let's say it's 50 X or 50 HR. Divide both sides by 50, it will be what, 70 beats per minute. 
You get it? So that's why the answer is 70. So know this formula. So anytime they give you a question, like this, all you need to do is impute what they give you. So as long as they give you cardiac um, stroke volume as 50 and they told you that the heart rate is 70, all you need to just use time to get the cardiac output. Okay, so know that formula. 154. When analysis, when ana analysis and ECG, when examining an ECG, they determine that the duration of the cardiac cycle of a person is one second. What frequency of heartbeats per minute does this person have? So again, I'm going to show another beautiful photo. Again, if they give you this question, I want you to use this formula. Yeah, if you use this, you can use this formula. 60 divided by the seconds given in the question, you get the heart rate. Okay. So they told you here, so 60 divided by the second given in the question by one is equal to what? 60. So we got the heartbeat. You get it. So assuming here it was 0 0.8, it would be 60 divided by 0 0.8 equals to 75 beats per minute. Okay. Good. It is necessary to examine the elasticity. Almost done. It is necessary to examine the elasticity of a person's large arterial vessel. Which of the instrumental method of research is it better to use for this purpose? 155. The answer is what? Sphymograph. An instrument which records the strength of a person's pulse. So let's eliminate. Why not electrocardiography? Because that's ECG, no? For no cardiography is to check, I think, the sound produced by the heart valves, okay? Vector cardiography, I don't know what that is. It doesn't even rank our question. Flebography is flebo vein, yes? So that's why it's not it. So that's why it's you get self-explanatory in a, in a, it is necessary to examine the, the state of a person's heart valve which of the instrumental method of research is it better to use for this purpose so the answer will be phonograph phonocardiography i just told you that phonograph phonocardiography is to check the heart sounds the heart murmurs let me rephrase the heart murmurs or the heart sound produced by the heart valves so if you want to check the heart valves you use what phonocardiography the process of the process of reprisation in the myocardium of the ventricle of an examined patient are defective. The violation of amplitude com amplitude configuration duration of what wave will it lead to? So they're asking that the process of reprisation in the myocardium of the ventricle. So the reprisation of the ventricle is defective. Which wave will it be affected in T wave? In the course of an experiment on a rabbit, a bat a bandaging of the kidney artery was done. As a result of it, the level of arterial tone increased or just think about it, the pressure in the artery increased or like vasoconstriction, yes? The increased secretion of what substance causes? Of course, it will be what? Renin. Look at what they did here. They did not put angiotensin 2. So you have to choose renin. If they put adosterone, don't choose adosterone. Adosterone is sodium and water and potassium them them okay and potassium and the rest so it's raining because of course for you to get the angiotensin to raining has to have converted the rest here yeah? makes sense because it's part of the renin angiotensin system in an experiment the linear speed of blood movement is measured it is the least in capillary that is now they're not talking about resistance, so they're talking about the speed of blood movement in capillary is the wrist. Why? So the answer will be the biggest total area of the transverse section of capillary. I told you that um, there's a lot of capillary. So when you take like a cross section or a transverse section, it's a lot at the end. So that's why the speed is very small because it's not, it's a lot. So there's a lot of place for the blood to go. You get it. So yeah, that's why the answer is C. Done. 
what changes of the function of the isolated heart would take place after the increase of the concentration of calcium chloride in the perfused solution? Again, we have done this to be increasing the force and frequency of contraction. A student got tachycardia before an examination. What changes in ECG would testify about it? So the answer will be shortening of the RR interval. What do I mean by that? Let's look at our ECG again here. So RR interval, RR interval. If it is, if it is um, one, two, three, four, five, 300 divided by five was 60, okay? If it was one, two, three, four, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 300 divided by 10 is what, 30, okay? So if there is lengthening, okay, if there is this lengthening of the RR interval, it means the heart rate is what is like the 30 bits per minute I just explained, yes? So that's its bradycardia. So if it is shortening, so let's say this was here. So we only have two. 300 divided by two is what? 150. Imagine someone's heart rate being 150 beats per minute. So that's very high. So if someone has tachycardia, you see it by shortening of the RR interval. So it will be shorter. So maybe it will be from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. You get it? Yes. During the research, it was determined that normally the liquid outlet in the institution this question, I'm going to come back to it in the excretory system video. It's the same reason why I skipped that question 121 in the last lecture. I will come back to it in the excretory um, something. After several hours sitting in the first position a in a bus, a patient got edema of the feet and ankles. What is the reason for this? So because the person was sitting for long, what happened that there was venous conjection. Yeah, 163. Yeah, why? Now, um, another point you should note down is your, um, when your heart is pumping blood, you know, the force is using is helping the blood to be circulating around your body. Your vein actually, um, what how blood goes from your leg to your heart is that when you are moving left and right, you are contracting your muscles. It's also like con the muscle contracting press, or let's say squeezes the vein and push the blood up. Yeah. So when someone's sitting in a bus for a long hours, the person is not moving their body. So the it's like the blood, there's no contraction. So the blood cannot move from the leg up. So that's why the person developed edema because there was venous congestion. So there was a lot of blood in the vein. In the excretory system, I'll come back to this question again and we'll explain the mechanism. Hmm. We're almost done. The duration of the PQ interval exceeds the norm against the background of normal duration of P wave. The reason for it, it is lowering the speed of excitement through what? Through the AV node. I explained to you here about the um, laser wave. Yeah, this place. If they say there's any, they say that it is increasing. If this thing, if this picking part is increasing, it means that there's an a, a decreased speed of, you know, a lowering speed of excitement in the AV node, because that straight line signifies the AV node delay. What did I do here? I'm sure you guys all have this PDF, so I'll just read it from my phone. 165. I don't know why why I did that. So 165 states a person got an increasing tone of arterioles against the there's an increased tone of arteries against the background of normal index of, of heart work. How will it influence the value of arterial toning? I can't believe. I cannot remove this, but I'm sure you guys can see it. So look, they said there's um, against the background of normal index of heart work. So that means the heart work, that means the contraction, the amount of blood entering the heart is normal. So your systolic pressure will be, look, your systolic pressure will not increase a bit. So your option should not have anything to do with increase of systolic pressure. However, they said there's an increase in the tone of artery. I told you if there's increase in tone of artery, is increasing diastolic pressure. So how will it infect, affect it? So number A, the A option is pressure will not change. So that's not the answer. Systolic pressure will increase. That's not the answer because they said there's normal index of heart work. Yes. That and um, I'll skip C. D, diastolic pressure will diminish. No, that's it. 
pressure cannot diminish because we have increase of the tone of arteries, yes. Systolic pressure will decrease. So they just said that the heart work is, the index of heart work is normal, so it has nothing to do with systolic pressure. So the answer will be C, that systolic pressure will increase because of what? Increase in the tone of arteries, 166. As a result of bleeding, the volume of circulatory blood of a patient is reduced. Okay, how will it influence the value of arterial toning? So if the volume of circulatory blood decrease, it means the amount of blood now entering the, um, the tone, the amount of blood entering the vessel will decrease, yes. So that's why your answer is going to be systolic and diastolic pressure will decrease. Why? Because what this is circulatory blood of a patient it decrease. It means the amount of blood in the and that's entering the heart decrease too, yes. So that's why your systolic pressure decrease. But that's why pressure too also decrease because the amount of blood that will remain or that is in the um, vessel itself will also decrease. So both of them will decrease. In an experiment on a dog, it was necessary to reduce the excitability of myocardium. What solution is it? What solution should you, it is advisable for you to introduce? So what you want to do, you want to reduce the excitability or you want to cause what? Hyperpolarization. If you want to increase the excitability, you want to what? Increase the polarization. You want to increase what? The polarization. So here they want to reduce the excitability. So they want to cause hyperpolarization. What do you have to introduce? Of course, not 67, but. Oh. Slow down. 167. Yes, potassium chloride. <laughs> Of course, yes, you want to reduce the excitability, so it's hyperpolarization. So you have to infuse potassium chloride. So if it was increase the excitability, you have to infuse what? Sodium chloride. So to reduce the excitability, potassium chloride. A sportsman has the increase of arterial and frequency of heartbeats before a competition. And the influence of what part of the central nervous system is, is it possible to explain these changes? So I've done this question before, is cortex of large hemisphere. I quite wasn't able to remove this. In an experiment on a dog, the a peripheral part of the vagus nerve was irritated. What change will occur? So of course, you just irritated the king of parasympathetic. So it will be what? Decrease in the frequency of contraction. Yay, we are done. The change of body position from horizontal to vertical caused the decrease of venous return of blood to the heart. Okay, it makes sense. Why? Because I just explained this, so the blood went down. As a result, there is a decrease of stroke volume, of course, because there was not enough blood entering the heart. Mm -hmm. And arteriotony signals from what receptor first of all will start to compensate. So remember, I told you that they have the immediate regulation, short and long term. Maybe in my spectrum, I might do a video and send to you people, but you should know that first of all, it has to be the immediate response. So that's why it will be the bar receptor. And maybe I did not mention this, but your bar receptors are located in the arch of aorta and carotid sinus. During physical activity, the during physical activity, the activity of the sympathetic parts of the nervous system increases. Okay, it makes sense because they want to um, redistribute the blood to the main organs that need it, which results in the increase of minute blood volume and narrowing of the vessel. But the vessel of working muscle dilates sharply. What is the reason of dilation? Now, good. It's, I love why they put this at the last part. Yes, I did tell you that in, in if, for example, a lion is chasing you, you know, in a sympathetic state, you will normally have vessel constriction and and um, increase in the blood volume and heart rate. You know, your blood pressure needs to be good, needs to be needs to be high. However, it's not in all the case. I told you that. That's why I'm telling. Like when you want to think about the sympathetic, you don't just think hyper for everything. In in the in the um, in the muscle that you, that you're using to run, for example, in physical activity, if there's vessel constriction, it, will there be enough oxygen there? 
No. So in that part, actually, there will be vasodilation. But what is causing this vasodilation? It is the accumulation of product of metabolism because in, in biochemistry will do this. When you are um, performing physical activity, there is what you are breaking down glucose, you are using a lot of um, energy. Yes, there's metabolites because when you metab when normally you are, you are metabolizing glucose the aerobic way, it's fine. But when you start meta metabol metabolizing glucose in the anaerobic way, you have the accumulation of lactate. Yeah, so this lactate has a way of acting on the vessel to dilate it. So that's why it will be accumulation of the product of metabolism. So that's what causes dilation of the blood vessel of the working muscle. So that's why the answer is E. Thank you very much. Please. Any question for me? Okay, please, if you guys like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.